heroes. We've been resisting since, ever since. We the poorest of the poor, but the lands are most rich. Europeans alive today, cause they came over sick with diseases. Praying to a dead Jesus, delirious from the serious black pain. The middle age, today the sages say you gotta be the bravest prey, like Geronimo unafraid. How did you decide to to do what you're doing? Oh man, I think um, I think I had a long silence mm. for 21 years. 21 years of silence until I read uh, this book by Piri Thomas mm. down these mean streets where he was talking about being called nigga and spick. Mm. Both of them in New York. And he has one scene where he's on the top of a rooftop and he's like, look at me, here I am, world. Mm. A nigga and a spick. <laughs> And so um, that, you know, inspired me to write that I had stories too. So at the same time, mm. um, with my other comrades in school and college, we start reading about Black Panthers and about history and mm. civil rights. And he asked our professor, you know, James Turner, um, hey, what, what were Puerto Ricans doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And he said, go find out. That's <laughs> what <So> we did. <laughs> So we start finding out, and then that was our special project, connecting um, the African diaspora, you know, connecting the diaspora. Yeah. As Puerto Ricans, as so-called Latinos, as so-called, as um, part of the indigenous diaspora, mm. connecting the indigenous and African diaspora. So through that, we started performing, doing poetry, creating black and Latino organizations, newspapers. Mm. Um, and... Um, we started performing and people heard us and started continuing to invite us. From the beginning, we started using drums, percussion instruments, mm -hmm. and we started adding a bass, and then we added a trumpet, now it's like 12 of us. Um, and you are based in uh, New York? In New York, all over New York, Brooklyn, Bronx, and Manhattan, mm -hmm. East Harlem. And uh, we're all organizers and educators too. That's what we do, we, te we teach throughout New York City schools. So we teach poetry. I teach poetry. Yeah. Use poetry as a tool for literacy and liberation. And um, so we teach parents on how to use that tool. We teach other teachers. Mm. So we do that. And then we organize around a lot of different issues. Right now, we're specifically organizing around our death penalty. Mm. You know, four, uh, Two years ago, four brothers on death row contacted us from Texas mm. and asked us to come down to Austin, Texas to perform. At a rally. One of them was Randy Arroyo, who was 17 when he was put on death row. Mm -hmm. Tony Ford, who has a stay of execution, but he had a date to die in March, mm -hmm. so he's still alive. Kenneth Foster. <coughs> Alright, for that. Yeah, we bounce back like a rubber band, slingshot attack. Between their eyes, falling on their backs. Some warriors jail, but we coming back. But never gone, just step back. Prepared to organize for our next attack. Warriors worldwide attack back. Go to City Hall, loot and sack. It's the people's loot, so give it back. Stop singing the blues, dignity is back. Resurrected by the red, brown, and black. Imperial walls about to crack. If you don't got gold, then step back. Watch it fall when the sisters attack. Together with the brothers, ain't nothing we lack. Incorporate all who make the pack to stop this train coming off the track. It's the end of Bush Rain and corporate attacks. So red, brown, and black attack back. 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 I've been a um, socially conscious rap artist and uh, hey, what's going on, bro? Spoken word poet. I mean, I've been. Writing ever since I was young, um, ever since I was a kid and foster kid, you know, going through abuse and stuff, and you know, my um, okay, performing, you know, as a way to like not just speak out, but like try to organize people, man, led me to performing at Hampshire College like seven years back, and hacked the, the welfare poets were there, and uh, it was beautiful because. You know, I was there like... He's a good brother, man. I was there by myself, you know what I'm saying, performing from Western Mass area. Mm. You know, um, trying to get my way into like the, the scene of performing, you know, um, to create a conscious place where black people can exist, you know, mm. as a recovering addict. Um, 
you know, trying to get into places where, you know, there's no alcohol, there's no drugs, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like, really talk about the, the abuse of uh, foster care and stuff. And yeah. they was there, man. And in fact, you know, they invited me to like, join them with them, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it was like, it was beautiful. It was like, it was weird, you know what I'm saying? Cause like most times when cats are on stage, they trying to, nah, nah, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, and like, so this was really an inclusive process, man. Come up, come on up, you know. Say what you gotta say. Definitely, and definitely. Let's do it together. And it's, and it's cool because <coughs> actually, Mary Bombardier, who's from Hampshire College, you know, kind of hooked me up with that. Um, and uh, you know, it was, it was really cool because where I live at, man, you know, it's like, you know, she's a white woman, but mm -hmm. you know, I've been a foster child and outcast in my community and mm -hmm. stuff. And speaking out, it's like, yo, these white folks, are like hearing my words, man, and they're like, you know, what's going on in your community, man, <laughs> it is, you know, yeah. we want to support you so that, like, you can do what you can do. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that all white folks was cool, but, you yeah. know, she's really, like, this really beautiful woman, man, that, like, made it happen, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, um, I mean, she didn't want no credit for mm -hmm. it or nothing, man. She, she, she allowed it to happen and stepped off the way. We have come a long way, brother, and you have come a long way. Yeah. There's good stuff coming, man. I can see. Uh, yeah. That's good, man. Go to the poetry stuff. <laughs> um, I'm gonna make the video on my students so I can get them. Um, <laughs> check this out, y'all. I want to rock this here, this freestyle about housing because, um, check this out. Everybody's affected. New Orleans. And infected. They trying to take the land to build casinos. And as we go back into the 1800s, 1840s, and we see how America created the war against Mexico, and we see how they tried to exterminate all the Tainos, and we see how they brought Africa to America and tried to make us Americans, but putting us under the concrete creek. Yo, this, this is about housing, because wherever there's a home, then we got a place to roam. We got a place to build our scientific laboratories, and if we had that, then this place would look like glory, like heaven. You wouldn't have to read the Bible. It'd be where you stand. It'd be in your recitals, but now what we're reciting is death. Prostitution, alcohol, and drugs. Come on, son. Cats don't even remember how to rise above. We forgot how to cry and drop tears. But if we had a home, there would be no fears. Okay, to be honest, there would be some, but not as many. See, right now we got plenty. Why? Because we got to go with our hand out. Can I have a bed in your shelter? Oh, there's no room. Where do I go? Boom, the bomb drops, and then we wake up into this crazy place called reality. Remember when we used to have the fantasies about being rich when we watched the Million Dollar Men? Remember how we thought about being strong? Now we got cigarettes in our hands. I know that was me, three packs a day, but if I had a home, what would I say? I love where I'm at. I love who I am. The grass is greener on the side that I'm at, but now... But now there is no grass. It's been burnt up. I mean, these chemicals destroyed it. I mean, my mind, my soul, my mom, my pops, my sister, and my brother. I'm looking for others, but I can't find them. Because every time I try and find them and find family and strangers, that's all I see, strangers. Cats from a different land, like they angry, like they mad. You should see the grill peace and ask them why. And they say because they're homeless and there is no solution. But I got one now. See, started talking to these people at the Massachusetts Fair Housing Center. Mm -hmm. And they said that if you go to them, they'll investigate your case of housing discrimination. And I like that. Hello. Because for so long, I, I felt like. You know, every organization, every organization is about creating this place where, like, nothing exists except for the shell for money. But try it out. Learn about housing discrimination to advocate for yourself, your case, so we don't walk around like modern-day zombies, not even slaves. It was interesting about homelessness, man. Basically, welfare poets... We mean the welfare, meaning the good of people, the welfare of people. 
but also huelfano means orphan in Spanish. So huelfanos of the world is like all the people displaced. And as a Puerto Rican, you know, in 1898, the U.S. condemned our fate and we became keepers to Hell's Gate. Basically, the U.S. came and be turned us into a military industrial colony and try to make it their little vacation spot. But Puerto Ricans continue to be Puerto Ricans. And recently we had one of our great leaders, Filiberto Ojeda Rios, the revolutionary, was assassinated by the FBI on September 23rd, a day where all Puerto Ricans celebrate independence, no matter what they believe. And the FBI chose that day to assassinate this man instead of arresting him when they could have. They just shot him and left him to bleed and thinking that that was going to scare the independence movement and keep people from believing in that idea and keep people... They also thought that they would uh, be able to liquidate the independence movement by having people act out in violence after he was assassinated. But instead what's grown is that idea of independence plentyfold throughout Puerto Rico. And if you can't believe that you and your own people can run your own country and have and your own destiny, then you don't believe in yourself. And that's one of the worst crimes if you don't believe in yourself. And that's what's happening in Puerto Rico. They have people not believing in themselves, believing that they can be independent. That's a worse crime than anything. So this song, this rhyme is in Spanish, but it's for, it's for Filiberto Ojeda Rios, Puerto Rican revolutionary. So we look him up. And it's in Spanish, and it goes, Atención. Boricua en la luna, donde quiera que se encuentra la bandera estrella sola del pueblo rebelde como el filo del machete en los proyectos caseríos la situación está que muerde Filberto comandante, el FBI cobalde no van a poder frenar la revolución que viene el orgullo que sostiene tras todas las violaciones en Borinca y Nueva York se activan los sectores quemando la bandera americana en la red do or die, ya tú sabes, la trinchera en el Bronx preparando rebelión con los huérfanos somos libres y seguiremos siéndolo. Cause this is a battle cry of hip hop worldwide. This is more than music. It's a word to the wise. Movimiento mundial hacia la libertad. La cultura es una alma. Hay que disparar. That last part of that verse of the hook. Culture is a weapon. You gotta shoot it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, it's funny when you're talking about that, like, you were talking about earlier, like, um, how the United States bombed, um, yeah. They went in Philadelphia. Oh, in the movie. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Mumia's in jail, you know, and. and Mumia's in jail because he exposed the move bombing. Yeah. And he was a reporter. And you know what? They, they didn't know. They didn't know. Once they found out that he, who he was, Panther, no, then they decided to keep him in prison. You know? Exactly. But that happened with um, these two, um, I think they were Italian, these two dudes, like, a long time ago, man. Um, uh, they were. Yeah, yeah. Vincetti, um, something like that. Vincetti and uh, I forget their names, but Sacco, Sacco and Vincetti. Yeah. And, and um, once around, the, around the time of um, when they killed, executed uh, the communists. This was during the labor movement. Yeah. You know when labor movement was at its peak, but once they they they, they put them in jail for like robbing a, a, a either store or bank. Yeah. But um, okay. once the the original bank robbers came up and said, listen, I did it, they went ahead and killed him. Mm -hmm. And then you're doing the same thing with Mumia. Sure. You know it's what I'm saying? It's a political thing. It's always political. Yeah, man. It? You know what I'm saying? But uh, one of the great things is that Mumia is staying strong, but, you know, you know, they tried to, like, you know, bombing their neighborhoods, man, as a way of, like, taking away their homes so they could feel like they wouldn't have a place to be. But the Tell reality me. is the world is our home. You know what I'm saying? Once we break down these barriers of capitalism that's been built up in our, in our minds, we can find a home anywhere, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and keep the movement going. You know what I'm saying? Man, we got a lot to learn, especially from, look, if we want to learn about how to live in this country, we got to ask the Native Americans. We want to learn about freaking people being, you know, dealing with weapons of mass destruction as Native Americans. You want to ask people about colonialism as Native Americans and yeah. how they survive. You want to ask about being, you know, what do you call it, uh, chemical weapons being used against people as the Native Americans. You know what I'm saying? They know about displacement, they know about genocide. 
And that's the first And then they just place like many times over. You know? And then the other flip side, if you want to learn how to live in harmony in this country, you ask Native Americans. You know? The only way people survive, the only way white people survive, Europeans survive, is through Natives and Africans helping them survive. That's our, that's our humanity. And, and that's the opposite of this inhumane process called imperialism and capitalism that's ruined the world. And people think like some of the things that have been done today, like, like um, just look at like some of the modern things that use around homes and take up people's homes, predatory lending, <laughs> discriminatory practices. People think that that's new. They think that there's no help, you know what I'm saying, the greatest help. <laughs> I refuse to go back for wherever I came. The dirt to death, hate, and shame. Seems like that's all I know, the pain that constivates my soul. See, I'm a bastard and emancipated slave. Feel a self hate your rage. Times I cry, pray that life gets easier. Keep my head up, so I feel freer. I pray to God for salvation of earth, cause Willie Lynch, Ronald Reagan, Bush stripped my worth. My, my dad never taught me this, but this vast no longer for the soul to miss. I miss confusion, economic storms. I meditate for flavor and strength to move on my experiences. I put in my rhymes to rock the slave ships and free our minds. Kill the pain, please stop the wars. So many people caught in hungry jaws. For the pain from we don't know where. And all we're left saying is, life ain't fair. It comes to the destiny of my life to see the purpose of darkness and light. Me being the bastard fighting genocide. Humans with PhDs commit homicide. You want to know why kids commit suicide? They built the pain nationwide. No place to go but down. Or in the vicious cycle round and round. I made so down but was America. Big business causing hysteria. Mm. I don't mind battling the emotions of the bit of pain. But doing it alone leaves the people insane. Vulnerable. To all sorts of slavery. The guy the Panthers came before me to show me that my people want to fight. Martin taught me how to be wise and upright. Malcolm taught me to go where the truth leads, and Gandhi taught me to meditate to strengthen all of these. Oh, enemies want to be homies, and my family wants to own me. Once a little crap, now I'm twinkling in the eye. That's the truth will bring forth the truth of the lie. How did it all change? Was it the money, the fame, the college education, or my skills? I'm a role model, I keep it real. So take away the pain. I'm poetic, like alarming alliterations. I'm rhythmic, like because of personification. I'm passionate, like a poetry slam, slinging serious savory slang. Never bland. My philosophy is I am who I am, a poor Puerto Rican man. But I'm rich with the gifts of the wealth funnel clan. Everywhere I feet meet the concrete, it's about free the land. Never getting caught in the quicksand. Standing tall, planting firmly on our two feet. Y'all doing all we can so we can stop this free fall in this great misadventure. We be the producer, the director, and the actors. Ain't no avoiding the disaster that's lurking. So we build with those who are hurting, looking for healing, a deeper meaning, a change, a revolution. And there's many around the world who are looking for this solution. What you choosing? You could be a poet, a musician, a teacher, a preacher, and even a magician. And together with funnels, we can make decisions. What you bringing to the table? You ready to be held accountable? You ready to live in reality and not in Pharaoh's fable? You better get down for the fam and not the cam? Walking the long road using bomba, blana, and hip hop as code. Subliminal to the enemy, connected to the community. This is freedom's echo, word is bond till we all free. This is freedom's echo, word is bond till we all free. Till we all free. Hey yo, collectively we can crush this giant if we all organize and rush in defiance at precincts, prisons, and all city halls. If we all organize, then this government can fall, and all corporations who all benefit. From slavery, its legacy, and all its benefits, and the stealing of native land is how the rich got rich. Took the sickness around the world, now the whole world's sick. Yeah. <laughs>